Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner, weighing in at 100 pounds soaking wet, we have the wildly popular Cash Basis Accounting. Woo! And in this corner, wreathed in gap approval, we have accrual-based accounting. Which accounting basis will win this slugfest? Stay tuned, fight fans. Oh, hello. <laughs> Welcome to Accounting How To. I'm your host, Carolyn Grimm, and this is my sidekick, Terrence the T Account Rex! Whew. And we're here to put the fun and fundamentals of accounting. And we're here today to explain the differences between cash basis and accrual basis accounting. Is one better than the other? Let's find out. When we set up the accounting books for a company or an organization, we need to make some decisions. And one of those decisions is whether we'll use cash basis or accrual basis for tracking our revenue and expenses. Now, to understand the concept of cash basis and accrual basis accounting, we first need some grounding in GAAP. So what is GAAP? GAAP is Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. Now we cover GAAP in more depth in another video. But for this video, we're most focused on two principles. The first one is revenue recognition, and the second one is the matching principle. So the revenue recognition principle gives us guidance on determining when we have revenue and when we have an expense. And the matching principle tells us that when we have revenue, the expenses that we incur in making that revenue need to be recorded in the same time period. Let's make it easy by looking at an example. So let's say we have a retail store and in December, we have $10,000 in sales. And we need to match the expenses that go with that revenue and make sure that they show up in our financial statements for December. Now, let's say we bought $5,000 of inventory in November, and that's what we sold in December. And let's say we aren't paying for the inventory until January, and our customer isn't paying us the $10,000 until February. So we now have a scenario that crosses four different accounting periods. November, December, January, February. And it also crosses two accounting years, assuming that this company is on a calendar year basis. Pretty confusing, right? So in this scenario, when do we have revenue and when do we have an expense? Well, it's all about timing. So when we're talking about cash basis accounting versus accrual basis accounting, this is where we're going to see our big difference. So under cash basis accounting, we recognize revenue when we receive the cash. And we recognize expenses when we pay out the cash, when we pay that bill. Under accrual based accounting, we recognize our revenue when we earn it, not when we get paid for it, when we earn it. And we recognize our expenses when we incur them, not when we pay them. So which is better? Well, it depends. So cash basis gives you a better view of cash inflows and outflows. And this is a really important thing for a business to understand because cash is what keeps the business going. Cash is the lifeblood. If we don't have adequate cash to pay the bills, to buy more inventory, we don't have a business that's going to be able to operate for very long. But accrual basis gives you a much more accurate picture of profitability. So when we have revenue, what are the expenses that go with that revenue? And what is our profit based on that? Now that gives you another really important view of your business. So on one hand, you're looking at cash in and out. And on the other hand, you're looking at, are we making a profit? So if you're a small business, 
you can use cash basis accounting. And the reason that and the reason that small businesses often use cash basis accounting is first of all, it's easier to keep track of things. But it's also focused on that cash piece of it because cash is such an important piece for small business owners. The bigger businesses are required to use the accrual basis of accounting. But let's take this example and walk through and see what the differences are between using cash basis and using accrual basis. So our first slide lays out the timing of these different transactions. So we bought inventory in November for $5,000. In December, we sold it to our customer for $10,000. And then in January, we paid our supplier for that inventory. And in February, our customer actually pays us. So those are the time periods that we're looking at, November, December, January, February. So as far as our customer transaction goes, we sold to our customer in December, $10,000. And then two months later in February, we got paid for that sale. So when do we have revenue? Do we have revenue in December or do we have revenue in February? And then when we're looking at the expense side of it, where we bought the merchandise that we were going to sell to our customer, we bought the inventory in November and we paid for it in January. So when do we have an expense? Well, under cash basis accounting, we have revenue when we receive the money for it. And we have an expense when we pay the cash out for that. So revenue when we get cash and expense when we pay cash out. So under cash basis accounting, we have revenue in February when we actually received the money. And we have an expense in January when we actually paid for that merchandise. Now, the thing with cash basis accounting is that it does not conform to GAAP, to our generally accepted accounting principles. We're still able to use it as a small business, but it does not conform to GAAP. We're not following the rules for recognizing revenue expenses, and we're not following the matching principle. So let's look at what our profit and loss, our income statement would look like under cash basis accounting. So for the month of November, we did not take in any money and we did not pay out any money. So we have zero in revenue and zero in expenses and therefore zero in, in net profit. In December, it's the same thing. We did not pay out anything and we did not receive anything. So again, we have a profit of zero. Well, then in January, when we actually pay the bill for the merchandise that we bought, we have an expense of $5,000. We have no revenue to match that up with. So what we have is a loss of $5,000. And then in February, when we receive the cash from the customer, we are now going to recognize $10,000 in revenue, but we have no expenses. So it looks like our profit for that month is $10,000. Is that really accurate? Did we have a loss in January and a profit in February? Well, under GAAP, no, we didn't. But under cash basis accounting, that's exactly what's going on. And again, it's perfectly fine for a small business to use the cash method of accounting. But from an accounting perspective, it's not necessarily the best way to go because it isn't matching up your revenue and your expenses. So you don't really know what the profitability of your business is. All you know is what your cash flow is. So now let's look at that same scenario under the accrual basis. And the accrual basis is GAAP approved. So under the accrual basis, we recognize our revenue when we earn it. And we earned it in December when we shipped that merchandise off to our customer. And because of the matching principle, the expense that goes along with that, that was originally in November, we need to shift that over into December so that we have our revenue 
recognized and our expense matched up to that revenue in the same accounting period. And so what that does for our financial statements is it gives us zero revenue, zero expenses in November. It gives us $10,000 in revenue and $5,000 in expenses for December, giving us a profit in December of $5,000. And then because nothing happened in January or February, we didn't sell anything to our customer, so we don't have any revenue, and we didn't buy anything, so we don't have any expenses, we end up with a profit of $5,000 in December. Now, with our cash example, if we looked at the whole period of time from November to February, we did have a $5,000 profit overall. So it ends up being the same after some period of time, but we aren't able to see the profitability as well under cash as we are under accrual. So with accrual, we know that in the month of December, we had a profit. It's not carrying on into January and February of the next year. We can look at it and say, we had 10000 in revenue. It cost us $5,000 to make that revenue, and we had a profit. And again, perfectly acceptable for a small business to use cash basis accounting, but they could just as easily choose accrual-based accounting. Now, when we're talking about accrual-based accounting, we're talking about using accounts like accounts receivable and accounts payable. And that's part of what helps us to capture things in the month where they need to be captured. So if you're using accrual basis accounting, we have to have a mechanism that moves revenues and expenses around to get them into the correct accounting period. Well, that mechanism is called adjusting journal entries. And guess what? There's a playlist for that. You'll find the link in the description. Now, the good news is this. You can have the best of both worlds. You, you have to make a choice whether you're going to use cash basis or accrual basis, but you can get a picture of your business based on either cash or accrual. So you can get a picture of the cash part of it, the cash in and out, and you can get a picture of the profitability, the revenues and expenses being matched up. And you can do this within your accounting software by just the click of a button. So here's an example from, uh, this one happens to be from QuickBooks Online. It's one of my sample companies that I use. And you can see that with a click of a button, I can look at a report either in cash basis or accrual basis. So you get the best of both worlds. And so now that you have a basis, if you will, <laughs> see what I did there, uh, in cash and accrual basis accounting, now you can jump into adjusting entries and get to understand those as well. So until next time, stay balanced, my friends.